Captured Pittsburgh Darkroom has been made possible by generous contributions from Gallery Chids, Small Universe, and Captured Identity. Today we're featuring the song Stand Up for the Left Out by Kansas Dan. Kind of almost uh, ambushed poor Ellen here as, as she came in to check on us, make sure that we were doing not damaging her space, which uh, we had to hide, hide all of the drugs and hookers and everything. So. Right. Without, without the almost. <laughs> 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 Was that a cut? Was that a cut? I think we're going to cut that out. Cut. There. Okay. And we'll just cut Good. that out. Oh, I don't care. I mean, it might get more customers coming in. You never know. Now my hard boiled poet got tattoos, been to jail, lived on Cherokee Street in a roach motel. I got liberated, got left dead. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Captured Pittsburgh Darkroom. I'm your host, Jason Kodat. Today we are filming in the gallery and studio Chiz, and we are lucky enough actually to be talking to the owner, Ellen Chizdies Newberg. Thank you for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Especially on kind of such short notice, we, we have to note for the studio audience that we kind of ambushed her. She was actually just coming up to check on us, make sure we weren't doing anything bad to the space, and uh, make sure we didn't need anything, which was very nice of you. And then we just kind of ambushed her, and now she's on the show. So uh, how long have you had this gallery space here? 22 years. Okay. 1995, May of, and uh, I never knew what I was getting into, but... Um, I was still here. I ended in October of 2017. Because okay. it was originally not all of your art was here. It was Correct. Other it art. was uh, very little of my art because I had very little time to spend on my art. Uh, but I had artists from many places in the world and country and some local people as well. Okay. And then at some point you, you decided to retire from that and kind of switch. And now this is your studio space This as is well now as... my studio space. And I'm having fun painting which is the, uh, the main thing, I suppose. Now, before you, you had the gallery space, did you have a, a career in art? I was an artist. Um, I did a lot of volunteering for a lot of different things in my other life uh, and moved to Pittsburgh. It was my sixth move in nine years uh, wow. from a bunch of places uh, before here. And I never thought I'd stay, but I did and I had a husband, a different one, and two children. Uh, that was in 1969, December, and I'm still here. I worked for, uh, as a volunteer for the women's uh, shelter. I worked for UPMC doing art with uh, transplant patients. Um, I went back to college for a psych degree after working in it without the degree in it uh, for many years um, at an older age uh, to Chatham and got my degree. And after doing my internship at Western Psych with geriatric, depressed and or confused, I opened an art gallery. Oh, wow. So that's some of the history of me. I was originally a musical director and I was a musician. Oh, okay. What did you play? I played the piano and uh, poorly the viola because they made me play it um, because I could read music fast and they needed another violist in high school. And uh, I taught piano for a lot of years as well. Okay. So Pittsburgh, it sounds like, is not your original home then. It is not. I grew up in New York, well, New Jersey for part of it as a baby and then uh, Long Island, basically. I should say Long Island, which is how they say Long Island in New York. But um, we moved here. Kids went to school in the suburbs here. And uh, I moved into this city uh, many years, late, years later. I've been in this city where I live for 29 years now, so don't start counting my age on your fingers. <laughs> I try not to uh, okay. because I'm getting up there. I, I'm, I'm old enough that I... I'm no longer a kid, so I, I understand that. I'm way up there. Now, when, when you had a gallery space here, did, did you specialize in any particular genre of, of art? Well, I had mostly contemporary arts. They were artists who were all alive. And at one point, uh, there was a gallery next door, 
and um, her artists were all dead. So we decided that we weren't competing with each other. Um, I had work from artists from lots of places in the world, basically because I felt that a lot of the local artists were seen uh, in a lot of places all the time, and I didn't want the work to be stale. I like outsider art as well, and I had a number of outsider artists from lots of other places as well. Okay, very good. Well, we're going to take a very short break, and when we come back, we're actually going to talk about your work, but we'll take a very short break for these messages from uh, our partners. Join Captured Pittsburgh at the next unveiling of the Shadyside Open Air Photography Gallery on Thursday, July 5th, at 7.30 p.m. Meet the artists at 7.30, and the gallery will be unveiled shortly thereafter at 8. This episode of Captured Pittsburgh Darkroom was filmed at Gallery Chiz. This features the abstract work of Ellen Chisdy's Newberg. You can see her work online at gallerychiz.com or visit the gallery on Ellsworth Avenue in Shadyside. So welcome back. We're still talking to Ellen Chisdy's Newberg, the uh, owner of this great space that we've been filming in this week. And uh, now that we're back, we're actually going to talk about what sort of art you're doing today. Well, I'm working on three separate series kind of at the same time. I'm known for abstraction. Mm -hmm. um, most people have told me over the years that they always sort of see figures and faces, etc., in my abstract work. And when I went out of business in October as a gallery, people asked me what I miss most about having the gallery. And my answer has always been the people. Um, so I decided if you go through Architectural Digest or Home Decor, any of these beautiful magazines that show wonderful rooms and furniture, etc., cetera, uh, they hardly ever show a person in the rooms. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mystery reader. When I was in the seventh grade, I was told that if I read another mystery book, uh, it was not going to count as a book read for the year. So I'm still reading mysteries and watching mysteries. We're sort of addicted to BritBox and Netflix and a lot of the foreign mysteries as well. And so I decided to paint things that show uh, rooms and settings that are meant for people without the people. And yet they imply the use of the things like chairs and tables and dinners and uh, televisions, uh, that there would be people there. And getting halfway through the series, I started realizing that it also shows loss because at my elderly age, I have lost many of my friends. Uh, and uh, so some of it is sad. I use happy colors, um, but it denotes the, the scenes, the, the red piece over there on that wall. Uh, it was the second one I did in the series. The chairs are all facing not each other uh, so that there's no connection. There are flowers on the table wilting because they need to be watered. Uh, there are dogs in another one of the paintings that need to be fed and a bird in that one. So that's, that's the second series that I'm doing besides my normal abstracts, if you'd want to mm -hmm. call them normal. And um, I'm also working on a new series. These are four of them right behind us, actually, that I've done. These are the only four I've done. Uh, this one was the first. This was the second. This was the third. This was the fourth. I won't go into detail about them, other than that when I did that one, it was very, it was darker, uh, not my usual colors. And I wanted to paint in brown and red together, because I never mm -hmm. have. Um, I usually have lighter colors. And when I started painting, it reminded me of what's happening every night on the news with Hawaii. Yes. And so it's called Hawaii. And the news reporter would be there, and behind him is beauty. I mean, it's treacherous and dangerous and miserable, but it was beautiful to see the fire and all the things coming up in the fire. So that's the concept on that one. The others have different concepts as well. So. That's basically the three kinds of pieces I'm working on. There's one back there I was working on yesterday all day. Uh, it's still in process, but um, I'm so far happy with it. I can't paint small, it appears, 
that uh, that yes. is true. I seem to need a big canvas because I keep wanting to put more and more on it. So that's how it works for me. That makes sense because I think that might be the smallest one here, and it's it's four feet on a side. It's... Yeah, and that's that's little. That's a small one, and um, it's actually a toilet seat. It's called the throne. <laughs> And it's, again, meant for people's use, but there are no people in it. There's a bunny rabbit in there, though. And if we wanted to see more of your work online, do you have a space where we can look at that? Yeah, I do. Um, it's on gallery, spelled G-A-L-L-E-R-I-E-C-H-I-Z, which is uh, .com. And I'm still using the same um, website that I okay. used when I had the gallery as another gallery, but it's now me. I'm being selfish now, and that's it. So you can, we, we just got them all on the website, actually. Everything that's current that I have okay. is actually in this room or on the website. And of course, if you'd rather see them in person, you can come down here to the, the studio and gallery space on Ellsworth Avenue in okay. Shadyside. Thank you. It's hard to see abstracts uh, in a picture actually. So I encourage it. I'm here almost every day, uh, not Sundays, but most other days painting and uh, doing my thing and I'm enjoying it. I've rented part of the space here too to another artist oh, who good. is also coming in. She started June 1st and so she's another person whose work you can come in and see. Her, her name is Kim Mackininch. Excellent. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks. and. Uh, I wish you good luck with uh, all of this that you're doing good work with. So people should come and see your displays on Walnut Street. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope you all come down to see the gallery here too as well. Everything's lovely and, and larger than life. Uh, thanks for letting us film in the space. Thank you. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you on the next episode of Captured Pittsburgh Darkroom. This has been a production of Captured Cities. Captured Pittsburgh Darkroom is produced by Jason Fate, Adam Thomas, and Jason Kodat. Production assistance for this episode was provided by John Hall and Dave Perlosky. Copyright 2018.